Good day, everyone. Welcome to the House of Trust. Through group sessions, one-on-ones, and public conversation on podcasts, we explore what trust looks like and all the stories that we create in ourselves and around ourselves to generate valuable relationships and conditions that generate and ignite a positive uh, impact. And today, my new guest in the House of Trust is Pierre Gourbach. Hello, Pierre. Good morning. Yeah, I know that you're someone passionate about collective learning. You work across sectors and cultures. You've been working recently with social investors and policy makers. But um, I'm just going to shut up and ask you just straight away. You know, what do you love to focus on, and 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 why do you choose to focus on these things? So why am I passionate about what I'm what I'm doing? I guess what I'm doing is mostly uh, really bringing people together bringing people from uh, representing various organizations together so they can, um, you know, create a shared understanding that goes a little bit beyond their individual understanding of, of what's going on, of, of what a specific reality in a given context is. So they, they share an understanding of the what, and then they try to get sort of to shared understanding of the why in terms of creating a shared purpose something they can they can create they can generate together that wouldn't be possible just by themselves dealing with uh, dealing with complexity and being able to overcome some of the systemic challenges also that we're facing it's um you know if if there's um i think there is uh, hope uh, at the end of the tunnel so to say but if if you want to tap into that i guess it's a it's a collective effort that we need to make mm-hmm. um and sort of you know facilitating those processes bringing that together is uh yeah, what 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 makes me get out of bed uh, out of bed in the morning? Can you tell us, um, give us example of maybe a a group of people that you least expected to to uh, to come along with that kind of uh, ways of doing things? There there are interesting uh, organizations in a way coming together that ha- that have a very very different culture, mm-hmm. um, a very different mindset in terms of you know how they make decisions. And this could be uh, representatives from, um, from German ministries, for example, working together with, with, with startups in a way and with sort of intermediary organizations and agencies. And um, yeah, for, for them to really try and sit down um, on, on one table and try to figure out, okay, how can we bring these various logics together in a way, like coming from a more also kind of like a political and thus slightly more hierarchical um, kind of thinking a little bit, you know, you have to, to they have to partly implement the, the priorities um, that, that come from the political level. So the ministries are sort of like optimizing for that case, whereas mm-hmm. uh, a social impact startup might actually be, be trying to optimize to create, to generate value for a specific target group in a given context. Yeah. Um, and it's really nice to see how like you know they need each other <laughs> to some extent they need each other um, and it's really nice to see how they make an effort to to come together and try to understand a little bit the, the needs and also to some extent the you know the the limitations sometimes of the organizational yeah the, the logic in a, in a way that everybody has and they they try and sit down and kind of figure out together okay how can we find the overlap how can we create synergies here and enable us mutually in a way. So that was uh, that's that's been a really nice experience over and over again in a way. Mm. So th- there, I, I hear that we might have a lot of assumptions about certain groups because of their their ways of working, um, but actually they're perfectly capable of meeting other groups as well. Yeah. So Pierre, I'm interested when when uh, groups that come from different cultures and different that have, who have uh, different missions or visions or ways of operating uh, come together and learn to connect around the same purpose and mission, uh, how, how do we ensure they generally implement and activate all these lovely thoughts that they've had during your sessions? Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess, like from the top of my head right now, I'd say um, one key ingredient is uh, mutual appreciation in a way. So you want to create some, um, an, an environment, a space where you recognize that, you know, there are differences, there are commonalities, but uh, whatever, wherever, um, you know, wh- whatever it is, uh, whether it's common or, or um, you know, different aspects, um, there can be appreciation for the different roles and also for the different mindsets and ways of working. 
Um, and also there are different functions simply also, right? Like a, a, a huge ministry is doing different stuff than, um, than a startup. And uh, to some extent, they also need different properties and need different characteristics. So I guess it's about acknowledging that we all have different roles and um, you know that we also have a certain socialization also as organizations. And uh, you can still appreciate that and invite whatever is there and then try to make it work for a shared purpose. Um, and this is, I guess, where communication comes in and uh, trust. Yeah. Mm, fantastic. You're, you're doing my words. So what, what, <laughs> tell us more about your definition of trust and how, you, how, it, how trust feels like for you in your work. Um, so how trust feels like, um, I guess it really feels like something like an, like, a, like an enabler, something that allows you to just fly and to focus on really what the whole thing is about, basically. And in my case, that's mostly about uh, creating impact or allowing organizations to co-create impact together. Mm -hmm. um, so trust really feels like, you know, the oil that kind of, I, I don't want to say machine because it's not so machine-like, actually, it's, it's more it's a it's a it's a pulse that allows the sort of a, a shared organism to to take shape and and get to work basically mm. and how it's created or um yeah how, how it what it looks like in this context specifically i guess it's um it's for me it's really about sort of it's it's it has some something like a, it's like a web in a in a way of of maybe of relations but also of expectations so I guess trust really is um, the the aspect that allows us to to let go of some you know it allows us to 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 free resources so that we can really focus together on on why we need to do something and and what specifically we need to do. So if I don't need to protect myself from from all eventualities from from my partners basically because there's trust mm -hmm. that allows us so much more to to move together in one direction. And I think in order for that to happen, so that would be the part in a way like what trust itself relies on. I guess it's really to to be very open and to to share why we're here mm. in a way, to share an intention that we have towards uh, other players and then also to to share an intention that we have with respect to to what we want to achieve and what's in it for us. Uh, there might always be some either you, you might want to call it agenda or there's a self-interest or there's there's just an inherent interest in, in the mandate of each organization um, and that's totally fine it's not about you know um, bending your own interest and doing something that is absolutely not uh, characteristic for your organization or yourself mm -hmm. but i guess it's about finding that alignment between all those various um, intentions and sort of create a shared buy and when that feels like you know it's not only fed by um by uh, or it can be fed by by self-interest but it's also fed or based on sort of a shared projection into the future yeah. and it can be a very strong web basically that allows uh yeah that allows co-creation and it, that allows uh that synchronizes the, the different players i guess this is really what it does this is the uh, you know, how it greases the many mechanisms of, of cooperation. <laughs> it's so funny because how you were talking, I, I, I could see and a lot of metaphors came up. I could see uh, uh, that kind of uh, love bond as well, that, that bond that makes brings people together. And so if you free up uh, the fear if you if you if you if you leave the fear out if you leave if you leave the the anxiety out you free up resources and that create more bond more glue more gel for hope for the the, the joy of putting something together hmm feels good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does yeah <laughs> and who needs this approach the most do you think mm -hmm. Um, for example, when we have when we have, have really complex challenges um, that are more of a systemic nature in a way um, mm -hmm. that simply go far beyond the scope of any individual player in a, in a system. Um, in that case, for example, uh, trust can be something as you as you also said before that can sort of unlock a lot of resources 
I can go into more of an impact driven uh, uh, direction then. Um, so yeah, to give to give one example, um, um, we were working on a project where it was about um, basically communicating with a Brazilian farmers that we were we've been working together with a few Brazilian um, organizations and with one uh, agency specifically and they were trying to find ways to communicate to farmers like how you know how how would we would they have to communicate basically in order for farmers to feel you know deforestation or or converting land um converting forest into into, into agricultural land um so they might feel less of a need of or the necessity to do it in a way and i guess also uh, already the way i'm framing it kind of slightly speaks for itself so they were trying to move away from simply blaming them even though they they might have felt that way in the past um as, as individuals working in the field um but um they they sort of had an understanding that in in the end they cannot stay in this antagonism it's nothing's going to happen except you know it's going to cost everybody lots of energy and lots of time um and headspace um so what they tried to do was like okay let's let's kind of try and understand a little bit better what are the needs behind this behavior that, that you know like basically destroys the amazon and you know creates uh, creates is to the detriment in the end of the day of the whole world. Um, so here, for example, they they really made an effort, um, and that, that was also through co collaborating and also um, through sort of aspects like role playing or forum theater mm -hmm. um, that are also there to sort of you know do enable you to to shift perspectives with with various players in the field, and that was something to create a little bit more of a clarity. Of course, on, on top of research data that they had on the target group, they wanted to to get more clarity. You know, why do they behave the way they do? And you know, if we want to offer an alternative um, uh, to to that behavior or, or make it obsolete in a way, then that then the new options would have to satisfy the underlying needs in a way, right? So, rather than seeing the not all farmers, anyways, but also even the 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 farmers contributing directly to deforestation, not seeing them anymore as the enemy to kind of overcome in, a, in, a, in, a, in their struggle, but rather seeing them as, you know, um, of, of course, we'd like them to behave in a different way. But if we want that, you know, maybe we need to understand why they do it and then create the enabling environment for them not to do it anymore. Mm. And it's not it's not, you know, per se solved, um, obviously, it's uh, uh, not yet, at least um and that's the thing with complex uh, challenges also they they take time and they ideally you know it's more about creating a momentum for a systemic change in that field mm -hmm. um so yeah i guess that in a nutshell is maybe a good way to to summarize my my long my long stay in the year where, wherever you want to create um a s systemic change that goes beyond simply beyond the power of any individual group of actors even within a system mm -hmm. when you want to change that um it's it's beautiful what can happen if you bring various stakeholders together and try to align you know find that overlap what what would you like the future to be like in a way or what what change would we all benefit from and then sort of you know align everybody and work towards their goal and for that um processes like that are super helpful right and i, I hear that it's when when different groups work together everybody puts in the work right because the assumptions are in any one of us and we need to dismantle them to make any any kind of progress right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely no and and i think the assumptions that's also a thing that's that's really interesting that you that you mentioned before right i mean having assumptions about different actors this is something that we especially in that project that we were spending a lot of time with um because it was really about um like getting the getting the assumptions out of our minds that we have of like why somebody behaves the way they do and then usually the when you actually take the why um it's much easier to 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 link with that once you understand the underlying need and then it's also much easier to think more positively and constructively in terms of okay that need also needs to be satisfied what else needs to be satisfied sort of in order to get to a better solution so yeah that helps fantastic <laughs> Yeah, what question would you like to create for yourself as you continue that work? 
that systemic thinking work, that supportive work? I think like one question for me is in a way, how can we, there, there are a lot of great organizations and a lot of great people that already, you know, that, that are trying to really look beyond themselves in a way, obviously the a myriad of, of, of great initiatives and, and so on. Um, and we are normally working together with, with those that already see the benefit in it and that already see the necessity to kind of, you know, not stand there by yourself, but like collaborate and, um, um, you know, join forces. And I think one question for me is in a way, how, how would it be possible to, to find a language and to find a way to, to, to work with a non-converted in a way um, and to make it something that is um, like not to convert people uh, or organizations, of course, but to bring the benefit beyond, um, let's say, this, the, the spheres where, where collaboration is kind of already um, pretty much consensual, at least the value of it. Um, and uh, I guess that's a question for me, like how, how can we find ways to make that, to open it up in itself a little bit more for people that or, and organizations who might not naturally think like, hey, that's, that's absolutely going to be helpful. So I'll be following up with you to see what, what you find out around that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I'm sure others will, will uh, find it interesting as well to, uh, to ponder. <laughs> Thank you so much for, your, for, for sharing your insights and, and your stories, Pierre. It was lovely to have you on this podcast, The House of Trust. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.